Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Isaiah 60 verse 1, it says, Arise, shine for your light is come and that the glory of the lord is risen upon you so if your light does not come there is no rising ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 2 tells us that when he speaks there is an energizing of the spirit that can step into the life of a man and grant that man the capacity to rise ezekiel 2 and verse 2 he says son of man he beckoned on him to stand upon his feet and he had no strength but verse 2 says, The Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet. Someone will rise tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. When I saw the theme for the convention, I was so, so touched, first and foremost, by the faith of the man of God to have captioned this convention with such a title, especially because of the times that we live in. We live in times where many people have been disappointed across nations, economically, politically, and it looks like um, the trust and the faith of so many has been dashed in disappointment. Is that true? Seems like there's been all kinds of despair, not just from a political standpoint, spiritually, and you travel from nation to nation and you see that the the despair seems to be the same is a common thread that moves across many people asking is god still alive many people asking is this how my christian experience will be so it matters that we deal very carefully with this subject and help people to understand that this god that we serve is a mighty god i need to say that as simple as it is you must have it as a revelation that the god that we serve it's not a man no it's not a man no you're the god who opens doors no man can shut you're not a man no you're not a man no you're the god of everything no one it matters who God is to you. Jesus was speaking to the disciples and he said, Who do men say that I the Son of Man am? And they asked, they said all kinds of things. Some said you are Elias. Some said you're one of the prophets who reincarnated. He said, But you have walked with me. What is your own testament? And he was shocked that even those who walked with him did not know who he was. And Peter, speaking by the Spirit, said, I know. He never said, We know. Because when it has to do with the revelation of the power and the might of God, it's not a corporate thing. It has to be a personal revelation. It says, I know who thou art. Thou art Christ, the son of the living God. And he said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but the spirit of my father. And he said, thou art Peter. And upon this rock, I will build a church, my church. I will build my church upon the rock of revelation. You see, not just a man that the dexterity, your stature and dexterity in the kingdom is predicated upon the depth of your revelation. The sons of Sceva casually went and tried to bring deliverance to the demoniac and he made a very serious statement. The man under the influence of the spirit, he said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. He says, who are you? In other words, we do not see you sustaining that pattern of revelation before manifestation. You are trying to administer deliverance, but your faith is not standing on anything. So I'm hoping that within the few minutes we'll have to share that God is going to expand someone's understanding of God so that it will swallow away the doubts, the unbelief, shut down the voices that the devil may has may have you know declared unto you that you are now receiving anything that God did not say is a lie 
The definition of a lie is not an untrue statement based on anything. It is what God did not say. The moment God did not say it, it is called a lie. Are we together? So the Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. Men do not have to be wicked to be liars. Is that most people do not have the power to make what they say come to pass. That's what makes them liars. God cannot lie because he has the power to make anything he says come to pass. So if God calls you lifted, that statement can be a lie if it does not have the power to sponsor that statement. The reason why we say God cannot lie is not that God does not lie. He cannot lie because the power component that insists that he remains true still resides with him. So before God makes a statement, there is already the power component to insist that what he says comes to pass. Is that not powerful? So if God says you are lifted, regardless the surrounding circumstances, there is an ability within him that when released can veto the, the circumstances and insist that what he says is what happens. This is very, very powerful. This is what I believe about God. Please pay attention now. There is nothing you cannot do. Help me. If you have said it, then you will do it. You have a track record of keeping your word. You're not about to stop doing it now. So tonight, very briefly, journey with me to the school of faith. And let's look at a few things that the Bible has to say as we brace ourselves to see the God of all possibilities work wonders in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 26. This was a very interesting statement. Jesus was rebuking the rich in that statement. And he said it, it is easier for um, a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to inherit the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed. They said, who then shall be able to make it and get into the kingdom of God? And Jesus beheld them, the Bible says, and said unto them, with men, this is impossible. He says, but with God. How many things? All things. Prophesy to every situation. Say all things are possible with God. One more time. Say all things are possible with God. Second scripture, Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18. I like the way Paul puts it. Paul is mentoring the church in Corinth and here's what he says. While we look not at the things that are seen, but the things which are unseen. And he gives the reason. He says, for the things that are seen are temporal. The word temporal means under a certain condition, it is subject to change. Not under every condition, but that no matter what happens around a man, under a certain condition, it can change. Hallelujah. It says, but the things that are not seen are eternal or permanent. This is a very powerful statement that everything you see, the moment it is visible, Paul says it can change. Everything. So, he's saying do not allow the things around you to affect your faith, he says, because there is a possibility in the dealings of God with man that anything that is visible can change. This is very powerful. Visible there does not just mean objects. It also means conditions and situations. Is someone learning already? That any condition provided it is manifest in this realm Paul leaves us with an assurance that under a certain condition it can change. So the question is not whether my life can change. The question is not whether my situation can change. The question is not whether things can change. It is for me to find out by the spirit the condition. My assignment is to search for the condition. Not to debate about the possibility of the change. 
poverty can become prosperity. Listen carefully. Sickness, a sick person, weak and beaten down by infirmity, can become a healthy person. The Bible is full of these conversions. For instance, he turned water to wine. Is that in your Bible? Even Satan believed that all things could change. He asked Jesus to turn stone to bread. Satan, the one oppressing you, already signed it as a witness. Satan participated as a witness that things can change. And he said, Jesus, we are both aware that things can change. Use that ability to turn stone to bread. If water can turn to wine, if stone can turn to bread, look up please. If a barren woman one moment can become a joyful mother, is that true? The last enemy that threatens men as far as this earth is concerned is death. And even that last enemy, the Bible says, that victory has been wrought over it. Oh death, where is your sting, he says. And oh grave, where is your victory? Are we together? While we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen, it says. For the things that are seen are temporal. I'm starting on this note. It's important. You may not know how, but you have to come to a point where you settle that things can change. That means this version of me. That means the challenges that stand before me, the mountains that stand before me, under a certain condition, my assignment is to show you that condition. Hallelujah. Even in science, they are already simulating scientific and climatic conditions that can make things happen from a scientific standpoint. Is that true? Science has been able to simulate the womb of a woman so that they put seed in a, in a medium that resembles the womb of a woman. And as far as the growing baby is concerned, he is in a womb because they have reproduced that environment. And the baby does not know the difference between the real womb of a woman and that object of experiment because they have mastered the art of creating the condition. My first word for you tonight is all things can change under certain conditions, not under every condition. A jobless person can become an employer of labor under a certain condition. Look up please. A sinner beaten down by a life of sin and defeat and Satan can become a fiery preacher of the gospel like Saul under a certain condition. The Bible is full of stories of before and the after version of men and situations and what you should really study is not just the men but study the conditions that midwife that trans that conversion most people study the stories but they never pay attention to the condition what made water become wine what made the leprous naman to become one who was healthy the possibilities are there but the secret is in knowing the conditions there are conditions that midwife miracles. There are conditions that midwife supernatural manifestations. What kind of condition was created that turned Samaria within 24 hours as a place of poverty and penury and need to a place of abundance? What kind of condition turned Egypt, I mean Israel, the Israelites, from people who were afraid of themselves to those who were singing songs of victory within a short time. Is someone learning? What condition turned a Pharisee who was persecuting the people of God to become the chiefest of the apostles? What condition turned a weak young man called Gideon to now become a mighty valiant warrior? What turned a man called Samson as a great and a strong man to become a weak man in the hand of the Philistines and to turn back to become a strong man that killed more people in his lifetime. Things can change. Hallelujah. Things can change. Your pain can change. Your sadness can change. It's even in your Bible that you have turned my mourning into dancing and you have turned my sorrow into joy. So settle it right now. 
that what you see is waiting for you to initiate a condition and it will begin to change sometimes overnight. There is nothing you cannot do. There's no, There's no mountain you, you cannot, cannot move. move. If you have said it, then you will do it. You have a track record of keeping your word. You're not about to stop doing it now. Are we still together? Remember, we're in the school of faith now. So Paul is saying that anything you see that is manifest can change. Watch the wonder even in the kitchen for women who cook. It is amazing how you can carry all kinds of ingredients and sometimes what you take in does not look like what you take out. Because a conversion happened. Sometimes it will need fire. Sometimes it will need refrigeration. You're, you call yourself a chef because you have mastered the art of simulating conditions. Conditions that produce outcomes. Are we together? A doctor will look at a patient and say, okay, we see. There is still a way around this. There is something we can do concerning this. And he now begins to introduce a condition. For some, the condition may be surgery. For some, the condition may be a bypass. But by all means, he can use even a scientific means to restore. Many of you have used the GPS system. Is that true? And sometimes, all you need to do is to plot where you are and where you need to go. The moment you feed the destination, it is the assignment to now begin to route roads. And sometimes in routing roads, it can meet a point where maybe the gate is locked and whatever it is, you will never find it complaining. Immediately without wasting time, it begins to reroute and tells you, well, there may be an extra 15 minutes, but I have found another way. Let me prophesy to someone, regardless what the devil has done, in the name of Jesus, we come by the God of all possibilities that God himself is turning things for your favor, turning things for your favor, putting laughter in your mouth in the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down. While we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal. The jobless situation that is seen is temporal. The barrenness situation that is seen is temporal. Dear man of God, the limitation in ministry that looks as if you've not, make, you've not made your calling and your election sure is temporal temporal the financial situation that has brought you shame and reproach temporal the indebtedness that situation is temporal the bankruptcy of the anointing upon your head and your life temporal the child that is making you to lose sleep temporal the condition remains until you find out what it takes to change it. Journey with me very briefly as we walk with the spirit through the school of faith to learn how we convert things, how we convert pain to testimony, how we convert darkness to light. There is a spiritual system of conversion and this is what I want to show you. Are you ready? Ezekiel 37. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We'll start from verse 1. Ezekiel 37. Now, there are not many times in scripture where we have a direct mentorship session as far as faith is concerned. There are many of these instances, but two of them are most striking in the Bible. One of it is is this scripture where the spirit of God took the prophet and began to school him 
on the restorative dimension of faith. He did not just teach him about faith arbitrarily. I mean, he taught him faith with instructions and as he obeyed, he saw the result there. Another instance was found in Mark 11 where Jesus used the story of the fig tree to begin to teach them directly on faith. Hallelujah. So in Mark chapter 11, he used faith to destroy something. In Ezekiel 37, he taught how faith can rebuild back and restore. Are we together? Now let's look at Ezekiel 37 and verse 1. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The hand of the Lord was upon me and he carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. Take note now. And set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. Verse 2. And caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, they were very many in the open valley. And lo, the Bible says they were very dry. Now look up please. Is it not interesting that in schooling and teaching the prophet, the spirit of God does not hide the fact that there was a situation. And the Bible describes the situation in detail. Faith does not negate what is the current state of things. I mean, it was God, God did not pretend as though it was not there. He caused him to see everything right there. Took him to a valley and he described by himself that the valley was full of bones and that the bones were very dry. Looking at the reality of what is on ground now is not faithlessness. The foundation of that school is admitting what the current state of things. When you admit the current state of things, it is not faithlessness. It is admission that now opens you up to receive the grace that converts. Now, many, many people in a bid to be people of faith do not acknowledge the reality of what is on ground. So they cannot even release their faith for a miracle. When the Bible shows the converting power of faith, it first reveals the current situation, whether it is sickness. It, the Bible does not hide the current situation. If it does not reveal the current situation, you will not appreciate the conversion and the miracle. So do not feel bad that your issue is a rent issue. Acknowledge that there is an issue here, but faithlessness there is when it now comes with hopelessness. Provided you know that the God of all possibilities is there. You can acknowledge it is true that my womb has not taken a seed yet. It is not lack of faith. It is true that I have bills to the hundreds of the thousands and the millions for my children. It is true that I may not yet be in my house right now. Is someone learning now? It is true that as it is right now, they diagnosed a situation in my body that is in need of a miracle. So the, he's schooling him here. And the first thing was to reveal the true state of the bones. And the Bible goes meticulously to tell us the bones were very dry. Meaning they had been there a long time. Many people are not able to seek help. Many people are not able to release their faith. Because... They feel that when they admit and they acknowledge the current state of things, it is a sign of lack of faith. No. No. When Jesus came to the earth, he revealed the current state of man's sin. He did not hide it. He didn't just look at us and say everything. No, he revealed it that there was a problem, but that I have come that ye may have life. Is that true? Yes. He caused me to pass round about and behold. Why, why would the Holy Spirit make him to first look at the bones? He would have just created an army and said, well, these guys were dead before. Now they are alive. There was something he was teaching the prophet. He made me to pass round. It is true that I went around and I looked at my bank statement. And I saw that there was nothing. It is true that I, I saw the medical report. I went to the hospital and they tested me and they said there's something wrong. But it does not stop at verse 2. Let's go to verse 3. It says, 
And he said unto me, son of man, this is the question now, can these bones live? You have seen it. You know this situation. Connect with what I was teaching you that Paul said. Do you agree with me? You may not know how it will happen, but do you agree that this is a temporal situation? Even though it has been there for a very long time. And do you know what? God did not punish the humanity of the sincere prophet. He said, God, I am, I am in the vision I am with you, but sincerely, with respect to what I have seen, only thou knowest. Hmm. Is someone learning now? That it is, it is not unusual that there are times, even as a believer, you can be so overwhelmed by the reality of the situations around you. You know, it's easy to just comment on things when it does not happen to you. By the time someone is told that you have cancer and it's stage three, stage four, it's easy for an onlooker to say, just believe. But there are times the real answer is not yes. The real answer the believer's answer is, Lord, this one is only your realm of reality that can answer it. As far as I am concerned, as a Nigerian, as an African, living in this day and this time, in light of the wickedness that surrounds our world, in light of the prejudices, only you can answer that question. Is someone learning? There are situations that can overwhelm men and overwhelm their lives. Bring them to points where they literally, even as a man of God, there are times that you can be so overwhelmed that you do not even know where will these bills be paid from. After teaching so much on faith, then you go back and it's you and God. Read what Moses did. When the people stood in front of the Red Sea, Moses calmed them down and said, Listen, these Egyptians you see today, you will see no more forever. Then he went to God and was crying. Give us Exodus 14, 14. Please give us Exodus 14, 14. Let me show you something. Okay, let's do 13 and 14. <laughs> Are we together? Help me please. Now, Moses is encouraging the people in verse 13. Fear not. Who is speaking? Moses. Fear not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. He says, which he will show you this day. For the Egyptians whom you shall see this day, you shall see no more forever. Say amen. amen. Verse 14. The Lord will fight for you. What a courageous leader. And ye shall hold your peace. Shocking. Go to verse 15. The Lord now said to Moses, why are you crying unto me? After encouraging the people, after declaring as a leader, now it's not pretense. I am just telling you that there are realms where you are overwhelmed. The man was doing the, the needful that leaders would do. Calm them down. Speak words of faith. And then he went and said, Lord, 2.5 million people are at my neck. I don't know what to do with this Red Sea. I have been able to calm them down. And God was telling him, did you not believe what you told them? The Lord said to Moses, it's in your Bible. Wherefore criest thou unto me? Do you not know that what you said was not a lie? There is a condition that can pass the Red Sea. No one like you, Jesus. No one like you. No one like you, is No one like you. No one like you. No one like you, Master. You're the God of everything. No one like you. So, just like Moses, Ezekiel is shown a, a valley full of bones. Be very fair on Ezekiel. I know you feel like a man of God. But do you know what it means to be full of a valley with no living thing? Only dry bones. 
you are the only living thing walking there. I have an idea because I've been kept in a mortuary before to raise a dead body. And I was the only one alive in that mortuary. No, 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 I'm not, I'm not lying. If I'm joking, I'll tell you I'm joking. And they had to close the door so that, you know, I was praying. You believe God, Abi? <laughs> Hallelujah. I remember when I got in there to pray for the, the body that was dead. And there were many, I stood there, I mean the body was like stone. I didn't even know what part of the body to touch to pray I consider myself a man of faith and here I'm in a room that I'm the only person alive in the name of Jesus Christ come back to life absolute nothing in the name of Jesus come back to life after three times I used the opportunity to start thinking about my life I said my God all these people were once alive Lord, help me to live a fruitful life. At least so I don't waste that time. And after a few minutes, they had to knock and say, look, it's, it's against what we do. You have to come out here. I went back and it was not whether the body came back to life or not. So don't blame the prophet. That's what I'm trying to say. Imagine that there were bones. This whole auditorium is full of bones and you are the only one. We don't know how long he walked seeing the bone of a child seeing the bone of an adult seeing the bone of one who probably was a professor before seeing the bone of one who was vibrant and then a voice comes son of man can these bones leave it was such a truthful answer please god don't ask me remember you are god and i'm a man remember when it has to do with this one oh lord thou knowest you are the only one because I am so overwhelmed by this situation. How are you going to pay the house rent? The situation where you just lost your job. There are times that the correct answer is only thou knowest. But now let's read further. Is someone learning? Verse 4. Again he said unto me, For as long as as you have admitted that you are incapacitated then you must be ready to obey me you have acknowledged that the knowledge of the conditions to change anything resides within me that means from now henceforth it will be stupid for you to doubt me you have said only thou knowest so the one who knows is about to instruct you now you must be apt to obey do not trust your mind when it has to do with this because you have admitted you don't know. Now the one who is all-knowing is about to instruct you and he said prophesy. He never said gather the bones. The logical thing to do is to gather them. But he said from where you are, even without a direct contact with the situation, he said prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O oh, ye dry bones, call them by name. Don't say, O oh, ye bones. Describe what you saw. O oh, ye financial situation. O oh, ye cancer. Don't say, O oh, ye bodily infirmity. That's grammar. O oh, ye dry bones, call it by the name you saw. He said, hear the word of the Lord. Listen. If you call the situation and stop there, it's called lamentation. But if you connect the situation to the word of the Lord, it is now a manifestation of faith. Ah, this issue of my bill, that is lamentation. But when you now say, hear ye the word of the Lord, the moment you bring the word of the Lord over that situation. Is someone learning? So the next time you cry, don't stop at describing the situation. He did well by saying, O oh, ye dry bones, O oh, ye barrenness situation. If you stop there, I repeat, you only lamented. But when you connect it to the word of the Lord, he say, hear ye the word of the Lord. A powerful revelation here that everything on earth, even what we call non-living thing, 
do not lose their ability to hear. The ability to hear is not lost even in death. This is the revelation here. Are we together now? That everything you see, animate or inanimate, sustains the ability to hear. No wonder the day Jesus comes at the blast of the trumpet, even those who are dead will hear. Is that not in your Bible? So, we do not lose our ability to hear. He said, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith. That condition has been designed with an ear. There is an ear that is waiting for a prophetic word. Hear ye the word of the Lord, it says. Verse 5. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. Verse 6 now. It says, and I will lay sinews upon you and I will bring flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath, it says, in you and ye shall live and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Verse 7. He now told him what to say. He had revealed the condition for the change. It was up to the prophet to believe. Do you know the bones never change as God spoke? The bones only change as the man repeated what God said. God was speaking and the bones acted like they did not hear. But he says, so I prophesied as I was commanded. I prophesied as I was commanded. And behold a shaking. And behold a shaking. I like this. And bones came together. Look at the precision. Bone to his bone. Bone to his bone. Naira to its bank account. Precision. Destiny helper to the one he should help. As I prophesied. There was a shaking. It was not a random shaking. Let me speak to someone. In the name of Jesus, I command bones to be joined to its bones. Listen. Please make sure you are not distracted. I'm showing you a very deep spiritual mystery. Otherwise, you will live a very defeated life. Son of man, can these bones leave? Son of man, can this situation leave? Son of man, can this health condition be averted? And he said, only thou knowest. He said, now I want to show you something. Prophesy. You see, acknowledging the current situation is sincere, but not enough. Even expressing your humanity in terms of your pain and lamentation over that situation may be sincere but that's not what brings the conversion the moment you begin to partner with God that is when the miracle begins the miracle began when the word of the Lord came the miracle did not begin when the lamentation continued are we together now it says bones hear ye the word of the Lord and he began to speak now prophesying there is not just about speaking in one word it is obedience because he only prophesied because God asked him to prophesy in the case of the nation of Israel in Jericho they were not asked to prophesy they were asked to go around so the most important component is when you stand before limiting situations it is not just about speaking the concept there is whatever he tells you to do there are times that in the midst of lack and defeat that all you have left is a morsel of bread and water and God will say take from it and feed the prophet. That is the miracle. Now, that, that does not make sense under that condition. But this is the God that we work with. Somebody say obedience. obedience. Shout it. Say obedience. obedience. Can I tell you? The moment you find yourself in a difficult and a negative situation, attempting to suggest a solution will only prolong your pain. Let me repeat it. Attempting to suggest a solution 
will only prolong your pain because the Bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man but the end thereof so you will journey in error and confusion and after multiplying your pain you will find out that you've added to the loss you've added to the pain the bible teaches us here that the moment you find yourself in an unpleasant situation stop acting until the word comes whatever you will do to secure a word from god becomes your bailout system moses understood this and he said lord we are not living from here I know the, the tragedy that will befall us. Joshua, can you imagine that these guys came to defeat Jericho? The Bible talks about Jericho. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit down, please. The Bible talks about Jericho. Look up, please. That Jericho was shot. Nothing came in and nothing came out. The fence of Jericho could host five chariots. And you want to come and fight such a people? Study the security architecture of Jericho. I've read it. You read, read Joshua chapter 1, 2. And you will see the, 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 the security masterpiece. That when the spies came in, they smuggled themselves to meet Rahab. And with precision, the news got to the king. And said some people had come here. Look at the kind of security architecture. These are the kind of people you are coming to defeat. Not without a divine strategy. Is someone learning? And Joshua remained helpless. Remained like a fool. Until the captain of the Lord's army appeared before him. And he said let me give you a strategy. Here is the strategy circumcise the men first you are not going to carry that impurity and go to bring down jericho because what you see as a physical sense fence is shrouded in a lot of spiritual mysteries you will need that circumcision so that your partnership with god can be in place and he circumcised the men and then a strategy came what was the strategy you will go around Jericho. Look at how stupid. Imagine you have a leader leading you. I hope you know that thing was not a parable. It actually happened one day on earth. That mighty warriors were led by a man who claimed he had God. And he said, this is what we are going to do. Seven days. We'll go around. And just watch them going around. And people in Jericho were saying, what is wrong with these people? They won. No noise. For the prophet, he said, prophesy. For this one, he said, go around. The most important thing is to hear what he says to do. Don't assume because you prophesied yesterday, that's what he's asking you to do today. You must wait to hear what he says. Are we together? It is by that power of the prophetic that God brought you to this solution arena. And they went around seven days and then the next instruction came. Now, you are going to go around seven times and after the seventh time you are going to shout don't fight shout and the bible says after seven times they shouted the word tehila the shout of the king and the bible says jericho sank it didn't fall it sank by what architecture, by what mechanism, ladies and gentlemen, did a physical building sink down like an earthquake, just like that? The God of all possibilities. But you see, if you were asked, can Jericho fall? Your answer would be like Isaiah 37. God, with this kind of architectural masterpiece, only down no west. Can I tell you? The moment a situation looks too difficult to fight physically, it means physical strength is not what you will use to defeat it. Are we together? Naaman was in a situation, the Bible calls him the captain of the Syrian army. He was a valiant man in war, but the Bible says he was leprous. One of the slave girls that they caught from Israel came to serve his wife. And one day she said, oh, that my master would go to so and so a prophet and he will be cleansed from his leprosy. And the king wrote a letter 
And when they got, they took it to Israel. They said, you see the trouble? These people want to create an opportunity to come and fight. And when Elisha heard it, he said, let the man come and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. When he came, he did not even come out. He sent Gehazi. He said, go and tell this man, go to Jordan and watch seven times. And the man was angry and said, "Where well, are there not other rivers that are cleaner and neater? He said, that is your business. If you are interested in the cleansing of your leprosy, I have given you a word from God. And the lady encouraged the man and said, please, why don't you go and respond so? And the Bible says he went there. The instruction was seven times. If he washed himself six times, he would still go back leprous. The Bible never said he was improving with every bath. Even at the sixth time, he was still leprous. It only when your obedience is complete. It's like having the readiness to judge all disobedience when your obedience is complete. And he came out the seventh time. And the Bible says that his skin was like that of a baby. How about Jesus Christ teaching his disciples and the tax collectors came to embarrass him and say you claim to be a righteous leader and you're defaulting in your tax. Isn't it amazing? This is a powerful revelation. Every time you are serving God sincerely, the devil will use finances to want to come and embarrass you. Jesus is teaching and here comes the tax collectors to embarrass him in front of his audience. And Jesus said, no problem. We will give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Now we're in a tight corner. There is a need for a miracle. But I'm the God of all possibilities. Ordinarily, you should not get a coin with a fish. But because I am the God of all flesh, go to the sea. Catch any fish, provided it is the first. Open the mouth. You will pick a coin out. Now, listen. That is not how to get money every day. But with respect to this situation, the God of all possibilities can bend laws to bail you out. The way to get it every day is wisdom. But that there are times you don't even have that time. The way to eat bread is to go to the farm and be patient and farm and wait for harvest. But there are times you will need manna from heaven immediately because you will have to survive. The one who gives increase to your harvest and supernatural supply of prepared blessing is still the same God. Is someone learning now? Yes. And they removed the coin and they paid their taxes and that was it let me tell you the truth provided you are alive and you live in this world ladies and gentlemen i want you to hear me you will be confronted with situations sooner or later personally or corporately that will stand before you as a mountain you must master the system of converting negative things that you see to become testimonies and realities many of you here probably may have been shielded by the faith or the responsibility of others so you may not have been exposed to a situation that needs you walking your own faith a day will come you are the one who will go around a valley and that valley will be full of bones and god will say now your pastor may not be here now the one who helped you may not be here you must learn how to hear god and you must learn how to obey somebody shout obey obedience say it again say obedience the difference between people who continue to wallow around in failure and others who seem to be excelling unusually and supernaturally i submit to you is the word of the lord this is what makes the difference that for others they have mastered the art of staying Till his word comes because making costly assumptions saying all kinds of things and doing all kinds of things i repeat will only multiply your pain for someone you are in a financial situation just getting up to assume that i need to start a new business quickly to pay my debt you may be in error you have to go to the one who knows and stay there and pray and travail the first thing that happened to the prophet was that he was in the spirit not in the flesh that kind of solution does not come in the flesh he took me in the spirit of the lord you must be positioned same thing happened to john john was caught up in the spirit every time you are in the spirit solutions come 
Did you hear what I said? Every time you are in the spirit, solutions come. Lord, how is it that this, this business is not working? How is this that my life, I am colliding with tragedies from pillar to post? There must be a way out. Now, our generation calls shutting down laziness because we are used to activity without divine direction. That is why we keep doing a lot of activity with no constructive progress. Our fathers of old will mark time sometimes for one month hearing God. But when that word comes, they run at the speed of it, an arrow. It is a tragedy that most people do not place value on the voice of God. Are we together? Shabakatos kiata. Lord, there has to be a way out. What is the next direction for ministry? What is not, not I know what to do. Common sense is wonderful, but it has landed many people in trouble. I know what the next business idea will be. Lord, I submit to you. You are the one who knows the next 10 years. I am limited. Even though prophetic, we see in part and we prophesy in part. You are the one who knows and he can say, do you know what? Begin to connect with this gentleman. This one that looks like he will not rise. This guy will be the next voice you are hearing in business, in ministry. And you will take a step that does not make sense at the moment. The wisdom of your obedience will unfold as time passes. My question for you is, do you know what the next 10 years will be like? Who would have known that our world would be like this 10 years ago? Are we together? Yes. I can share with you stories upon stories of the many times in my life where I had to stay until his word came and I acted on supposedly foolish instructions that redefined the next possibilities. This, that's, you see our lives, let me tell you sincerely, and it looks like we are so supernatural. It is not that. It is because we have learned to lean on a mighty God and we have come to trust the value of his voice that weak and ordinary men when they hear God and receive from him, they can run and move valiantly. He says, by you I will run through a troop and by my God I will leap over a wall. It cannot happen by the strength of the flesh. For someone, you may be a businessman and God is saying, mark time. Except you want to keep losing more money. You need to take three days off and lie down and cry to God. And say, I am a businessman, but you are the God of the universe. Help me. The day rain was going to come, I'm sure Noah said, everybody, whether you are a businessman or you are an architect, I am not an architect, but I have been told that rain is coming. Come and enter the boat, the ark. I'm sure many people said you are, look, we are intelligent people. This ark, who, who, how are we sure you constructed it well? But the Bible says when rain came, the heavens gave their rain, the earth gave their rain, whoever was in the middle. And the same rain was lifting the ark while destroying others until it kept it upon Mount Ararat. That is unfair because everything should perish. Yet the ark, as though rain did not touch. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something about God. I don't claim to know everything about God, but I can go on my knees to beg you sincerely. Don't just believe God, respect God. God is not a man. God only became a man. God is not a politician. He's not the president of a nation that was elected. No, he's not an ambassador representing some parliament. God is the creator of the ends of the earth. Your life is not the first to be created. He is a master at making men. Did the Bible not say, I will lift up my eyes son to the hills? He says, from whence cometh my help? And he said, my help cometh from the Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. If he made the heavens and the earth, he can make every other thing, including your life. Is someone learning? And so in this case, the prophet stays until he receives an instruction, the word of the Lord. Prophesy to these bones. And now he began to speak. And the Bible says, as he prophesied, as he gave, for someone as he sang and danced, God can say, close, lock your door. I know you are in a situation right now. They have given you one week 
to pay that bill one week and they say your health is deteriorating and the lord will give you an instruction it may come from your study in scripture sing unto the lord a new song or i will call upon the lord who is worthy of praise so shall i be saved from my enemies and he will say dance for the next two hours and you lock yourself in a room remember you are a ceo you should be checking statistics and be using intelligence but he said trust in the lord with all your heart proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5 he said lean not on your own understanding it acknowledges the fact that you have understanding but he says lean not on it he says in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path the next verse says be not wise in your own understanding it says fear the Lord and turn away from evil so you lock yourself even as a man of God father I confess that I do not know the way out I don't know what ministry should be for the next five years but I lean to you you are fasting and praying the Bible says on in the fifth month on the twelfth day the word of the Lord came 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 ah happy is the man who the word comes for you can be weak but let that word come a giant is about to arise you can be in debt but let that word come I'm not teaching you cunningly devised fables he said while we look not at the things that are seen you are not the first to be in debt you are not the first to be barren you are not the first to have a medical report ladies and gentlemen wishing and discussing your problem will only deteriorate it with time you need to understand the spiritual technology that simulates the condition for a miracle otherwise your life will never reveal the might of God hallelujah Amen. praise the name of the Lord if you are the, the wife the widow in Zarephath for you the instruction would come go and feed the prophet don't worry obey if you are the ones who are having the feast like it was in the wedding in Cana of Galilee the instruction would be fix um, fill six pots with water and take the risk put your life on the risk to go and serve the ruler if those rulers had tasted water they would have hung those guys I hope you know that Esther if you are the one who is changing the negative verdict of her man you may need to break some rules and enter to see Ahasuerus even though not invited just be sure that he's the one who spoke we look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. Lord, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever, Yahweh. Listen, provided you could look to him imagine if the prophet took initiative in that valley and said you know what i'm a prophet bones respect the presence of a prophet he would shout for nothing it was not the speaking it was the obedience it was not the word of the prophet that brought them back to life it was the word of god spoken through the lips of the prophet many times when you walk with god you see the way of the spiritual man is very, very strange because many things in your life will not make logical sense. Yet the miracles that your life will continue to command will first surprise you and then all the people that follow you. It is true. This is how some of us got here, ladies and gentlemen, by the foolishness of direction from God. We live in a world that has unnecessarily um, magnified intellectualism and I'm not against that but once it rises above the word of God and logic common sense I think I know my health I'm just feeling a little pain and I'm sure there's one drug I just got to find out wonderful but what if it's a spirit what if that manifestation is a spirit have you invented machines that diagnose the presence of spirits
the woman with the issue of blood were going to find somewhere to pray. The Bible says she spent all her earnings on doctors. She was not a careless woman. She did the best she knew to do. She was a responsible woman who took responsibility over her health and yet it did not change. And she resorted to unashamedly sit down as an unclean person. But the Bible says when she heard, back to the hearing again, when she heard that Jesus was passing, she said to herself, if I may but touch, I know that I do not know the answer to my, the issue of the, the blood that has plagued me, but I know it can change. And when Jesus was passing, many people touching him, some touching to find out where his pocket is to steal money, others touching different kinds of things. It was not the touch, it was that it was a touch of faith. A woman said, if I may but touch the hem of his garment. And the Bible says, as soon as she touched him, Jesus said, virtue has left me. Someone touched me with the touch of faith. And the woman looked and said, the fountain of blood had dried up. What a miracle. How about Lazarus? They cried and they said, our brother Lazarus sleepeth. He's dead. Come, let's go and wake him. And when he got there, he said, roll away the stone. You see, there are three death cases in the Bible. Three resurrection cases that were performed by Jesus. And all of them differed in timing. The first was the Bible talked about a captain, a centurion, in one of the synoptic accounts, who came pleading with Jesus to come and pray for his daughter. Is that true? And the Bible says that while Jesus was on his way going, the woman with the issue of blood, both of them were 12 years old. The woman was 12 years in her pain. That young girl was 12 years. Meaning the day that girl was born, that was the day this woman's trouble started. And the woman said, I will not let you pass me. And she distracted Jesus in performing a miracle for her. By the time Jesus was done, they said, trouble not the master. The lady just died. Somebody said, just died. It just happened. Jesus, if you had come a little earlier, and Jesus said, no problem. When he got there, he drove everything that looked like unbelief out of that room. And he looked at the little girl and said, Tali Takumi, little girl, I say unto you, arise. And the Bible says she rose up. Watch this now. Number two, the Bible talks about a widow who by some wicked ancestral manipulation was losing all the men in her life. The first thing is that she became a widow. The man in her life that represented the system of security and support, he just died. And while she was trying to grieve over that one, her only son died and they were carrying him. This one they had concluded just at the gate. In ancient times, once you cross that gate, you could not cross back with a dead body. And once they were crossing the gate of Nain, Jesus said, what is going on here? He said, drop that coffin down. And he picked up that boy, like picking an orange from the ground. And he came back to life. The third situation was Lazarus in Bethany. Lazarus had been sick before then. He even acknowledged that our brother is sick. And he said that sickness was not unto death. And yet he died. The same way he said this year is a prosperous year. And now by March you are already in a financial situation. I told you, a lie is what you say that you cannot make true. So when you say I will give you or when you say I have a car, it is a lie when you don't have the resources to make it true. Is that true? So when God says you are blessed, regardless of your situation, he has the power to sponsor that reality. It is on that basis that God cannot lie. Now the Bible says Lazarus was dead. And when they got to the grave, three days now, he said, roll away the stone. When they rolled the stone, he said, Lazarus. He was not speaking to those people there. Lazarus was inside. Remember the hearing thing again. Everything can hear. And he said, Lazarus, come forth. And they thought he was playing. And they saw a man bound hand and feet in grave clothes. How he was breathing when he was alive. Because the way they embalm people, even if you are alive and you are playing, you will die. 
Are we together? Yes, sir. And a man came out. So how was he breathing? He said, lose him and let him go. And they lose him and he went. The God of all possibilities. Showing himself every once and again. And the ultimate of that manifestation was when Jesus himself died. After three days, it looked like everything was over. It looked like Satan had defeated him. And Paul gives us the gist of what happened in hell. That all the powers and principalities were compelling him to bow. Acknowledging the lordship of Satan. And that when the legal claims of justice was now satisfied. That he made a public show of them. Triumphing over them in it. Is that true? And he preached to the saints there. And the Bible says they believed and he opened the prison gates according to Peter's epistle. And they all came out. On the third day, an angel came and rolled the stone and sat on it. One of the synoptic accounts says, and the spirit that raised Christ from the dead, Jesus Christ got up and arranged his grave clothes. He was not in a hurry. That is dominion. He arranged his clothes nicely and neatly from the grave. That means order can start even from the grave. Are we together? And Jesus resurrected and he came out and said all hail all authority in heaven has been given unto me ladies and gentlemen please hear me there is no situation you are going through right now no matter how long it has stayed except you define it and you agree with the devil that that situation cannot change but provided you agree with God and agree with Apostle Paul that this thing I'm looking at, it can change. I may not know how, but I know it can change. So your next assignment now becomes to stay with God through the ministry of prayer and fellowship with the Holy Spirit in partnership with the ministry of the word. According to Acts chapter 6 and verse 4, these are the twofold secrets that builds stature and sensitivity in the believer. But we will give ourselves continually, he says, to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Acts chapter 2 and verse, four, um, and verse 42, it says, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayer. Next time you are trapped in a situation, that should be the time to retreat they that wait upon the Lord spend some time in fasting and prayer Lord this situation my father is sick my mother is sick my daughter is sick I just lost my job the Bible says while we look not at the things that are seen I know there is a way out I accept responsibility whatever it is that I'm not doing right open my eyes that I may see and you are praying in the spirit and the spirit of grace will rest upon you and say this is it there is a destiny any helper that you dishonored five years ago that was a person who was programmed by God to lift you and to raise you like Hagar go back and make peace with that destiny helper and the person will lift you up I have placed favor upon your life you may go back and say uncle I'm sorry for insulting you five years ago and the man will say I had a dream before you came and God said when you arrive I should open a door for you there is always a way out hear me we're wrapping up many times when we go through the valley of the shadow of death we throw God out we throw his word out we throw prayer out we invite depression and lamentation and even Satan we count them around and we sit down and begin to meditate on these things and wonder why we do not rise maybe there's a man of God following right now and you're saying, Apostle, from the time of the pandemic, I've not had it easy with ministry. Can I tell you sincerely, you're not the first to be in that situation. And I acknowledge your sincere admission, like the prophet said, only thou knowest. But remaining in lamentation and trying to attract sympathy will not convert your pain to glory. You will need to understand an instruction from God. This is how the elders obtained a good report. And by the way, you are not qualified to be called an elder until you can show us your good report. There is a relationship 
between eldership and the exploits of faith, the Bible says a good report. Listen to me. I don't know who came to church tonight asking apostle, I've come to meet the God of all possibilities. My life is stagnated. Some of you have gone sincerely without speaking negatively from grace to grass. And as it is right now, you're wondering, Lord, can there be a way? I may graduate for years, there's no job. I return back home and my wife feeds me. My wife pays my rent. I'm a man of God, but I'm almost tempted to begin to manipulate people right now and to compromise. I have gotten to the corridors of compromise because of financial stress or because I am not rising and excelling. Listen, let me bring you a word of hope. The Lord put it upon the lips of his servant to organize this convention and call it the God of all possibilities. Not some possibilities. And the Bible says, with men it is impossible. Men can do some things like give you money, but they may not do some things like take away the sickness. But there is a God that is able to bring all possibilities. When there was darkness and chaos in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2, the Bible says the Spirit of God hovered round the face of the waters and the word of the Lord came again. Light. We're about to pray. I came tonight to stir your heart, to let you know that the situation that now mocks God in your life, your family, is at the mercy of your understanding, the spiritual technology that converts water to wine, that turns leprosy to glory. You must understand. Number one, it is not sinful to acknowledge the current state of things. You can sit with your wife and say listen there are bills listen the ministry is not rising right now they've diagnosed me they've said i am ss they've said i am um whatever it is i have some kind of blood condition maybe hiv maybe traces of cancer the mammogram is already saying something evil admitting the current state is not lack of faith but endorsing the current state and not speaking the word of the lord upon it is the difference between lamentation and declarations of faith. Oh ye dry bones, when you describe it so excellently, don't stop there. You must connect it to the word of the Lord. And then, by the ministry of prayer, the ministry of the spirit in prayer, and the ministry of the word, insist until you get a rhema word from God that represents the instruction that bails you out. Can I tell you, no matter how long you remain in the secret place until that word comes, stay there. It will be cheaper than the losses you will incur as a result of assuming the voice of God. Every time we take steps outside of the voice and the direction of God, I assure you we only program pain and tragedy. Apostle, I'm in Lagos and I'm a pastor. I don't even know where to go. I don't know where to get a church building. I don't know how to pay the rent and I don't want to compromise and start walking in sin and start doing a lot of demonic, destructive things because others are doing it. What is the way out? Seeking counsel from men is wonderful, but there are times all men will answer like the prophet. This is your situation, Ba. Only God knows. I don't have an experience to deal with this level of complication. So you must go back to the secret place. For someone, you've lost your prayer altar. You've lost your word study life all in mundane pursuit for things. You want to become a millionaire. You want to become wealthy. Whoever told you it is within the power of God to make great. Vain is the help of a man. The psalmist said, except the Lord builds the house. Is that not in your Bible? It says they labor in vain that build it. That except the Lord watches over a city he said the watchmen watch it but in vain that it is vain to wake up early and to sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow but he giveth his beloved sleep God is able to lift men spare me five more minutes and we're done tonight but I sense very strongly in my spirit that someone came to church tonight 
to encounter the God of all possibilities, but it will not just happen just by a prophetic declaration. That is coming even now. But listen to me. I just sense that someone has been crying and bleeding, somebody watching, somebody right here. You've been praying and saying, Apostle, I had to drag myself to church. I love God. I'm a man of God, but I am tired. Tired because it looks like nothing is happening. Let me bring you a word of hope. The Bible says, while we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen, it says, for the things that are seen are temporal. I will hold on through the storm and I will hold on to your word my life will soon reveal you're the lifter of men the lifter of men I will hold on through the storm Yes, I will hold on to your word. My life will soon reveal you're the lifter of men, the lifter of men. I remember we're wrapping up. I'm about to pray for someone. When the Lord gave me an instruction to move to Abuja, I struggled with the Lord for years because I said, Lord, I'm not sure that I'm ready for this. I understood the economic implication. I understood the sociological implication, but I could not deny that I heard him. And I got there and I said, Lord, where do I start for God's sake? How do you get a place? And how do you now begin to bring people? But I knew that there was a mystery in the Bible that can birth glory when you understand the conditions. And I remember I stayed in prayer, days turned to weeks, weeks turned to months. Master, you are the one who sent me. This city belongs to you. Would you speak? I remember one time the Lord asked me to go and buy, to get the map of Abuja, the map of Nigeria, the map of Africa, and the map of the globe. This was the instruction. No venue, no nothing. I didn't even know what date we were going to start. And in my foolishness, that was how I placed it and I was praying every day. I'm sharing this with you not for pride. I hope you understand. To encourage you and show you that behind everything that works is this same principle. And all of a sudden, as I began to pray, one day something happened. I suddenly looked at the map of Abuja and the city became small, very small. It was like as if I was looking from the lens of someone and I was just seeing six local governments and it was a city that was small, very small. You know the spirit of faith that came upon Caleb? Let us go up at once. That was what happened to me. And I said there is nothing that God cannot do and the rest I leave it to God it is history to God be the glory for those of you who follows we are preparing now for our UK conference and that is a miracle I was discussing briefly with pastor the auditoriums and all these places you see that that is used the the bill for those auditoriums can build estates in Nigeria without exaggeration you see and God gave instruction, staying with him, Lord, what is the secret? This is your mandate. Within about 24 hours of opening doors for volunteers, we, have about, we had about 2,700 workers stationed, waiting. Workers, not people attending. When we open the doors for registration, it's almost, it's the, the registration is almost over now. And this is a meeting in May. Listen, I don't say this to boast. I'm only telling you that behind the supposed supernatural manifestation of men is the childlike ability to stay until the master comes with a word. Hallelujah. You can imagine. 
I cannot begin to share with you the miracles and the manifold blessings and the hand of God what he's done incredible manifestations of his power I want to pray for someone there are two prayers that we're going to pray tonight as we wrap up this session number one is an encouragement for someone listen to me you have camped around your situation attracting sympathy for too long remaining there and hoping people will keep sympathizing while I sympathize with your pain but it's time for that the dry bones that you've been hovering around to become an exceeding great army for sake of time please can you give us verse 10 Ezekiel 37 10 he prophesies one more time and breath comes upon the people he says and they lived and stood up upon their feet an exceeding great army once dry bones now an exceeding great army and the revelation behind it is in verse 11 and 12 you may want to quickly look at it son of man these bones represent the whole house of israel they say our bones are dried and our hope is lost we are cut off for our parts now prophesy to them that thus saith the lord god behold oh my people he said i will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your grave is that in your bible it says and i will bring you into the land of israel so just lamenting over your financial situation or the barrenness situation respectfully speaking or the ministry situation may not do you much it's time to take responsibility to say lord i am done acknowledging this current situation it's time to partner with the word of god it's time to partner with the ministry of the holy spirit in prayer and begin to stimulate the conversion that bets glory and the secret is found in leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6 it says this is what the lord commanded moses that you should do then the glory of the lord shall appear to you there is always what god commands that you should do and when you do it the glory of the lord shall appear please rise upon your feet This is the victory that overcometh the world, the Bible says, even our faith. The God of all possibilities, as mighty as he is, depends on the faith of men to manifest his power. Some of you, you have been limiting the God of heaven through unbelief. You have been limiting the God of heaven by not staying with the spirit to obtain strategy that makes for your victory. I repeat to you one last time that vain is the help of man. You can struggle and move from pillar to post only to eat the bread of sorrow. But some of you may need to mark time on the pursuit. I know you've submitted your CVs and jobs are not coming. Minimize running up and down. You have tried. Stay with him. There is value when you stay with him until his word comes. Can we pray? One prayer that I want you to pray from the depth of your heart is grant me the grace to believe in you grant me the grace to believe in you oh god someone open your mouth and pray grant me the grace to believe in you grant me the grace to believe in you i shake away unbelief i shake away unbelief in the name of jesus grant me the grace to believe in you walk upon my faith walk upon my conviction grant me the grace to believe in you that you are able someone pray for one minute grant me the grace to believe for my family to believe for my finances to believe for the work you have put in my hands grant me the grace to believe hallelujah one time the disciples could not cast out a demon spirit from an epileptic patient frustrated they came to Jesus 
and he said why could we not cast this out he said because of your unbelief you have not trained your capacity to believe God to rise listen there are different levels of faith taught in the Bible there is no faith there is little or small faith is that true there is great faith there is exceeding great faith these are various levels and all of those levels command different dimensions of possibilities faith comes according to scripture by hearing the hearing that brings understanding the more you open up yourself now respectfully speaking let us be careful the way we open up ourselves unnecessarily to antichrist information that continue to dampen our faith whether it's the wrong use of social media you can sit down there and absorb all kinds of rubbish at the end of it your faith has deflated like the tire of a car and you now want to use it to command victories in the kingdom it doesn't work that way or you surround yourself with negative people who continue to say all kinds of things you leave the church with a prophetic word from your man of god and by the time you return you are already speaking like you are not saved no i guard my environment very jealously because the decisions that come out of my life affect millions of people around the world i have a responsibility to keep an atmosphere that is faith-filled spirit-filled and pro-destiny i am very intentional about my atmosphere is someone learning when jesus entered to resurrect the little girl he drove all the people who were laughing to scorn get out there are things and people you need to send out of your life politely but firmly to give your environment the kind of atmosphere for the miraculous Tomorrow I have a session in the morning, sadly because of time, I know that many of you have come. Hello beloved in Christ, we hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching